Hello everyone and welcome back to the Club Iron podcast. I am your host Matthew and today I am joined by Alex. This is episode 11 and it is a monumental episode for us because we now have two cameras so you can see our faces on YouTube. Wave to the camera Al. Hi everyone. <laughs> Uh, this episode will now be on YouTube, it will now be on Spotify, follow the rest of the pro, uh, the platforms. We have now got YouTube where we're posting extended clips, vlogs, uh, f- full-length podcasts, shorts, and collaborative content with other of your favorite influencers. Okay. And so far, that's uh, no one. Yeah. Um, anyway, this is episode 11, and today we are going to be talking about the optimal path to success, both in life and in the gym. I just want to start off, Alex, by asking. Of you, course, I knew you were going to ask me a question to start. Of right, let's I go. I just want to ask you, how do we measure success? Oh, for God's sake! Um, well, firstly, that's the whole point of this episode is to try and figure it out. Mm. I and mean, when we think of the path to success, I'm going to break it down just quickly. You know, it's 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 sort of trying to learn what what the optimal path is. It's mm. not saying it's this isn't us lecturing and saying i think this is the optimal path to success because if you you know if we're being honest and all of you was at home as well i'm sure you can say pretty confidently that we haven't really reached success yet um you know but but nevertheless we're still trying to find what the optimal path is you know what is the best way to success not necessarily the quickest but also one of the quickest ways to get there um, but I suppose first you've got to understand what, what success is. I don't really know. Good stuff. I don't think it, I don't think you need to know. I know it sounds like really terrible to say that. I don't think you need to know. I just think it needs to be, I think what you need to understand is what the path to success is. What does the journey look like? Because I don't think you should ever really know tangible, in tangible terms, what success is. Because that means that there is a, an end point. And if there is an end point, then there is no satisfaction in that. You hear people say that the whole gratification of everything is in is in the journey there. Yeah. There's, there is no satisfaction in achieving everything and then stopping. Mm. Go, we are goal-driven humans. We get our satisfaction from goal-driven behaviors and motivators. So there's no point trying to define actually what success is because I don't think we need to know that. I just think we need to know, well, I suppose we do. And you could say, oh, it's happiness, it's this, it's that. But I, what I think is more important is what should the, the journey look like? Because essentially, the end goal is the eulogy your, peop- your friends say to, to say about you after you're dead you've taken inspo from what i've said in the car on the way back from the gym now i can't i i don't usually listen to you on the way back from the car but i have you say this before you said this before see you you, you, the the question you want to ask yourself i think a good way to measure success if you can measure it i think the good way to ask yourself is if i die tomorrow what will people say about me you know if i die today what would people say about me that's a good measure of success what would you say about me first of all Besides the fact that I love using your toilet, oh, it's hard. It's hard to say like what I would say about you in total. I've just already broken it down into positives and negatives. Mm. You know, let me just go to the negatives because that's what you're really interested in. Well, let me just say the positives because that's what success is really. It's positive stuff. Um, it would be. I'm gonna say discipline, but I'm not sure that it is necessarily discipline. I think. If you were me and you were doing the things you were doing, that would be disciplined because you purge yourself of doing all the things that I crave, like Mm. drinking and smoking. I don't know why, but I just do crave those things. So I think discipline, I'm going to say that. Consistency. Yeah. um, Ambition, actually, that's a big thing. Um, Like you never settled on an end point. You're always looking for more always mm. sometimes too quickly but that's not necessarily a bad thing um negatives i would say is time management your time management is terrible i think i'd agree with you my mum would agree with you there you yeah i agree you were always late that's number one but more importantly than that i don't think you are going to be able to get everything you need done like if you worked nine to five monday to friday 
and you would have aired it, you know, three hours in the evening, and we had more things going on, like planning a powerlifting competition. Not that we are, but maybe we are, you know, hypothetically. Um, I just think you'd you'd quickly realize that you are using your time very badly. Mm. Like right now, if you said I can give you an extra twenty minutes a day, that is golden. That's how that's how rigid my time schedule is now. You know, it's yeah. what it's nearly eight o'clock now, and since six o'clock this morning, I haven't stopped. Yeah, same to be fair. And I know that, but at the same time, and this is what I was telling you about about training at PB. Yeah, it's a great gym, but I think you spend a lot of time, you know, traveling to and from the gym. And I think that time is not... I, I just think if you use your time more wisely, I think you could use your time more wisely in order to be more productive, essentially is my point. Yeah. I don't want to, you know, bang on about it, but it's that's my point. No, <laughs> I know, yeah. I, I think, I think if you, if you don't, if you're not able to handle criticism about yourself, you're not going to be successful. And I think part of the journey to success is being able to handle criticism. Mm. Well, why, why didn't I ask you the same question then? I mean, I've just ripped into you a little bit. You might as well return um, the favor. If I die tomorrow... What would you say about me? The first thing you would say. Not the first thing you would say. What would you say about me how as many, a guy? How many six foot six by six graves has this guy taken up? Two or three? <laughs> Bro. No, um I don't know, Al. I think you're a very I think you're a very goal driven person. But I just think you let things get in your way easily. And I think you conform to it a bit too easily. You're like you're the king of instant gratification sometimes. So willpower then. I think we yeah. I think the thing is the beautiful dynamic between ourselves is that you lack what I have in strength and, and vice versa. Mm. And I think that's why we make a good team mm. because we make up for each other. Yeah, you look at me like, what you know, What the hell is your problem? When I say, oh, I really, really fancy a pint, you're like, oh, what, you know, what the hell is your problem? Have you have you literally learned nothing mm. from what we've Funny been fact, through? Funny uh, fact, last week we had, we planned to go to the gym <laughs> on Sunday to record a thick back session. Sunday is in yesterday. Sunday is in a day ago, yes. The 16th of October. And I texted Alex about this on Thursday, and he said to me, oh, I plan to go to the Colliers. <laughs> you should have seen my WhatsApp message oh. to Alex. <laughs> Honestly, if I could get them up right now and show you. He I had would, a proper tantrum. I was like this. I was like... <laughs> I was like, this, is this guy no, nothing? I literally, I sounded like an ex-girlfriend. I was like, London meant nothing. <laughs> Do you know what? That is the dynamic we have. It's like, it's like a couple always arguing. Uh, I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. <laughs> it's a bit sus. But no, I know what you mean. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's the constant sort of, it sounds quite toxic when you say that, but it's, it's always, we're always, nit, we're kind of nitpicking a little bit, like always trying to pick out things that we can up. both do better. Mm. It's not one up. We do treat it like a competition because that helps us like go further. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, that's another thing. I mean, I don't think there are many people that really hold you accountable. And if you think of how to be successful, you could surround yourself with absolute bums and just focus on, you know, on, on your work. But I just don't think that's enough. That's going to slow you right down. I agree. Yeah. You know, no, being I around people, you. people like you, I can't really think of many other people. I'm going to be completely honest. I can't, you know, and if you're friends with me and you think, oh, what the fuck? Well, I just genuinely, I think there are certain people that I need to be around and more importantly, don't need to be around in order to get there. I think that's true. Yeah. I mean, there's the, the whole saying, you are the f f fifth product of the four people you're around. Yeah, yeah, that's a very strange way of saying that, but that's essentially the, yeah. the you know, the thing of it. And and you are you are a product of your environment. And if you think of what you want to achieve, and what you think success is, in order to get there, you need to at least be able to see other people who are along the same path as you in front of you. So you kind of just need to. It's it's almost lazy. The path of success can be lazy, I think. You just follow other people who are doing the same thing. But it does still take a lot of work. It's like with the podcasting thing. Most of our ideas are not original. They're not, and that's fine. <laughs> well, Don't... if you think about it, how hard would it be? How hard would it be to create an original idea in twenty twenty two? I think I think we will. But I think we are getting started and we need experience and it's a learning experience. But we look at impulsive uh, we look at their YouTube channel, we look at their clips, we look at their guests and the sort of thing, all the little bits that they do. And we say, essentially just say, right, let's do that sort of thing. Mm. You know, instead of going, how can we make this completely different? You know, saying that, is that a better way 
I don't know. I think maybe a better way could be to just go completely outside the box. But would that require more money? You've got to you've got to really weigh it up. Like, what is the best path here to be successful? I think at this point, at this part of our journey, which is towards the beginning, obviously, it's just sort of following the footsteps of somebody else on our journey. The foundations that they've laid. And if you think of, people. I know this is a slight sidestep from my point, but it's the same with social media. If you're trying to imprint in your imprint in your brain ideas that you think are beneficial to you and motivational sort of people and ideas and thoughts and quotes. You need to just just follow those sort of people. Honestly, there are about 30 people that I follow that I actually know in person. Yeah. I, mm, yeah honestly, yeah. there are honestly are people that I've spoken to and, and know that I unfollow on a daily basis. Most of the people that I follow are... People like Chaos Grizzly. Uh, I no, I don't even follow. Him. Has he got an Instagram? Probably somewhere. I got you know like Simon Sinek, Stephen Bartlett, Jay Shetty. Um, I got people like you know Bill Gates and and the rest of them. Elon Musk, just really really powerful businessmen, powerful speakers. Um, Tristan Tate, I love watching his Instagram. Mm. Um, yeah, I agree. Would, would have been Andrew Tate too, Cobra Tate back when he had his uh, his page, but that but that doesn't matter now. But uh, that's my point. Unfollow anyone who isn't on your path. And you should know what your path is because what do you what do you want to achieve in the future? Even if it's next week. What sort of person do you want to be next week? If that person is the person who goes out to a rave and does pills. X, Y, Z. Yeah. Or is it the person who goes to the pub and just gets drunk? If that's the person, don't point at me. X person. The problem now is that we've got two cameras. So every every movement we make is seen. Good. I know, I know. And every more. chin that Alex has I know. will be seen. Anyway, let's not talk about chin. We talk about this a lot. I just want to... I'm just going to figure out what I was going to say now. And you know what it feels like now. Yeah. I was oh, talking right. about... Yeah, no, I know. Of course I know. So I think everyone wants to be successful. But I don't think everyone understands what it takes to be successful. I think being successful is a lot easier than people think. People think that... It's, no. I think... Listen, hear me out. I think people think that success is this like big mountain of grinding commitment sacrifice and just well, hard it depends. Work. i think it is it is but i think the key to being successful is by taking it one step at a time you know if you hear if you watch the creed films and creed's losing the fight rocky says to him you need to take it one step one round and one punch at a time and i think that's very applicable to life you know the the obstacles you can overcome with by just taking things slow and steady, you know, slow and steady wins the race, as everyone likes to say. I think that can be re- transferable into success. And it all comes back to this Jap. I think it's a Japanese, let me just consolidate with my notes. It's a, there's a Japanese term called Kaizen. I don't know if you've ever heard of this. It basically stands for continuous improvement. And it's oh, Kaizen. Yeah, Kaizen. yeah. The way you Ka- said Kaizen. that, then I couldn't. Uh... And it basically just stands for continuous improvement. So getting 1% better every day. And I think that, to me, I think that is the best way to succeed. And this falls into play the whole uh, argument of consistency. You know, do you want to go hard and quick or slow and far? Do you know what I mean? Well, it depends because you're, uh, it depends what success is to you. Because success could just be happiness. And that doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean you need to do all of the things that, like, con- you know, continuous improvement and that. Well, I suppose maybe you could. I'd say so. But I, I look, success could literally just be security. As in, I know people, right, who not, they want nothing more at this point in time than to just have a stable family life. Yeah, that's Whereas fine. for me, I've been blessed with that and I don't, I take it for granted. Mm. Probably shouldn't take it for granted, probably should appreciate it more. That's another thing though. But me, for me, it is about real graft and achieving great things i agree yeah it's Especially not just about security because yeah. i've had that i've been blessed with that and i'm incredibly lucky so what i want is to i want to make those continuous improvements and by the way we said this so many times one of the ways you really are going to achieve things and make improvements is by making small improvements consistently and this is what you're much better at than me i personally think I can make larger improvements in a single day than you. You may disagree, and that's fine. But I personally think I don't that. D- I actually agree with that. Yeah, 
Because I've just got that relentless attitude. I will get up at four o'clock in the morning and outwork everyone. I will. But the problem is I won't do that more than three days a week. Yeah. I'm done then. And then I'm out in the pub. Done. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's like I can go hard, but like Matthew said, like if he, even if we went for a walk, like Matthew will tell you, I go up one stair, one flight of stairs, oh my God. and I can't breathe. This guy's cardio. Literally, we, <laughs> I can't remember where I was. We were literally walking around London, and we walked about 300 yards, and then Al was literally like this on a bench. He was like, ah. I was thinking, I was like... <laughs> that was, it's actually... I was like, ah, oh, I was like this guy, like... <laughs> it's, actually, real? it's actually no good at all. No, but... <laughs> Another thing that I was thinking about today, this just popped into my head. You know when you're saying, oh, you shouldn't go to the pub on the weekend? And one of the motivators that I found to to help me make those consistent improvements day in, day out, as opposed to just grafting Monday to Thursday and then sort of slowing down over the weekend, is, you know, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say now. I was literally in the middle of a sentence. How can I forget what I was going to say? Ah, oh, yes. It's about it's about the it's about the compound effect that you can achieve when you do things just consistently every single day, making a one percent improvement every single day. You know, if I make massive improvements Monday or Thursday, if you think of it in the gym now, if you think of physically, yeah, because um, a lot of people, a lot of coaches are going to be able to understand this very very well and going to be able to apply this with their clients. You know, if I'm grafting in the gym Monday to Thursday, but then Friday and Saturday, well, it's usually Monday to Friday. Let's say Saturday, Sunday, and then I go off the wagon. I go and drink, let's say, three bottles of wine 13, pints. 13 pints over the weekend, Yeah, which which is quite a lot. It's not a, a volume effort, but it's, it's a fair amount of alcohol. Mm. And I and I don't really eat much on the, on the day I'm drinking because I'm just drinking all day. And then the next day, I, I drink no water, I just eat junk food. Yeah, I might have made that. I might have made that progression Monday to Thursday, mm. but what I've done is not only have I come back down a bit, I've got a, I, 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 I make progress at the same rate the next week. Whereas say Monday to Friday, like Monday to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you make small gains. What happens next week is you can use the gains you made this week to create even more gains. Yeah. So it's exponential. You never get to that exponential curve. You never get to shoot up that curve when you're letting yourself go on the weekend. It's, it's linear then. You're going it? up and down, but you're going up at the same rate, is my point. I know this may sound complex, but it's just it's just that it's just that exponential uh, exponential curve. It's the, it's the it's the compound effect. So the the things you learn, it's like reading a book. If you read a book on something, that knowledge helps you learn other things much better. Yeah. It's like when you learn a language. If you learn a language, you can you start to become more yeah. There's a compound interest, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think success to me would the best way to achieve success is to do that. It's to be the one percent better every day because yeah. you know if you if if you get one for argument's sake, if you get one percent better every day, that's three hundred and sixty five days of getting one percent better. A year's time, I will be three hundred and sixty five percent better than I was now. No, you won't. You'd be more than that. Because of the compound effect. Yeah, but minimally, you'd be a th- you'd be thousands of of percentage points better off. Where that whereas what I'm saying is, let's say I make a one percent gain Monday to Thursday, mm. or just like let's say half half of the year, you know that's what 180 percent better every year. Mm. So even though I I am getting better week in week out, even though I can go to the pub, and this is the thing that I didn't get before, I'm like, but I am making improvements week in week out. You know, I still had the podcast. We are doing this, and I can still go to the pub and have a good laugh. And I go, well, well, why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't I? Because I am making gains. And if I'm being really honest with myself, physically, I actually don't think I am so much. I think I am in, well, I am in one of the worst shapes that I've been in. Um, but aside from that, just 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 acknowledging that, I think, let's say, you know, if I if I'm consist, well, say consistent, if I'm grafting four days out of the week. I'm thinking, right, well, why shouldn't I be able to do this every week and then just go and enjoy the weekend? You can and you should have balance, but you miss out on the compound effect. And that has been the motivator. This is my point. That has motivated me to go every day because in six months' time, the other guy is going to be 90% better off. Mm. Great, 90% better off. Some people are 0% better off or worse off. But then you could be 700% better off. Yeah. And then, and then yeah. the problem is, even if I pick up at your level, 
No, I mean, I'll pick a boy all out. Even if I work just as hard as you for the second half of the year, I'm, I'm just not going to be able to keep up because you're you're shooting up that curve now. You're making tens of percent uh, gains every week. Whereas I'm just starting to make that, you know, 400% maybe in the last six months. Yeah. So that's the thing, see. If you work really, really hard, but even if even if you just work moderately hard every single day for like two years straight... If somebody starts and they work 18 hours a day for a year and you're just working, you know, seven, eight hours a day, every day, once you've done that two years of work, you literally cannot, you cannot catch that, that guy. Person, yeah. Kobe Bryant said this as well. Yeah, I've seen this. I've seen this. And he said, look, I get up at 4 a.m. and some people are getting up at 7 a.m. And, you know, people will come into the gym and train at like 5 a.m. and he's already in there. And he's done like, you know, a thousand hoops or whatever. Yeah, he's done so much already. And he said, it doesn't matter how hard you work over the summer to try and get up to, you know, uh, get ready for the season. You won't be as far as You just won't be able to catch up to the guy who's got up at 4 a.m. every day and done it every single day. It's just not possible. And the point is, the point that I'm trying to make here, you can't, even if you work harder than that person, you won't do it. You just won't do it. Because consistency trumps pure action any day and by action i just mean doing things like just going for it so going to the gym and spending three hours in the gym and training seven days a week you know if i just go to the gym for 45 minutes a day every day for six weeks and you spend two weeks the last two weeks absolutely smashing it and you know working way harder than me you just want you're just not catching it you're just not catching me this is where I think I'm best at when it comes to consistency. Exactly, I think this so. This is why I, you, you know, I, you, you, I seem to be more ahead of you phys- physically. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I have been in a position where I've gone to the gym, you know, consistently over time. And the thing is, though, is like, do you know, you were saying about the instant gratifications you like, like, you know, going to the pub and stuff. None of that, like, none of that appeals to me. If I am set on an objective, so with the club iron thing now, the reason I am so ambitious is because I have set my mind on an objective. And once I put my head to that, nothing else matters. You know, once I'm like, right, Al, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. Nothing else matters. And I don't find any pleasure in those gratifications then from like the pub and stuff. And stuff. <laughs> um, I just don't <laughs> think about it. It's like, you know, I said, to, we, we spoke in earlier episodes that when I was fighting, I didn't like go out for my friends or go yeah. drinking for like a, nearly a year. And that is because if you fall in love with your objective, nothing else will matter to you. If you are so in, indulged in achieving something, you know, nothing else will become apparent to you or you will not care about anything else. I don't think like these top level athletes, you know, Kobe Bryant, Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, I, I, I believe Cristiano Ronaldo doesn't actually drink any alcohol. Curious Grizzly. Yeah, Curious Grizzly. <laughs> um, Bob Sapp, if any of you know who he is. I don't think Al does. Um, no. You know, these top athletes and these top, they are very successful people. Not only f- uh, physically successful, financially successful, but in, the, in their business and life, in their li- lives too. Yeah, in all aspects of their life, they they will you will they will say to you that once they are head headstrong on a goal, they do not care about anything else. Nothing else matters. Yeah, that's a very common thing. And athletes, especially, they have that real laser beam focus. And I'm I'm not saying I'm I'm an athlete. What I'm trying to say is is I have I believe I have the consistent mindset of a very successful person. And that is why I'm so sure that I'm going to be successful. Because to me now, nothing else matters besides this than what we're doing right now. And I'm not thinking about like going out to the pub. And I'm not like, when, when people you, say to me, oh, uh, pub on the weekend, I just think like that is the worst thing you could say to me. But but you, the thing is, the difference between me and you, and this, this I suppose this is just an excuse. It shouldn't really matter. But but you've never been like that anyway. You've never really had that. But you haven't. I have. No, you haven't. Because you've never really shown me that you really enjoyed that. that if much. I showed you my photos when I was in university, you'd see that I was in bad shape. It's on my Instagram, mate, you know. If you look, if you check on my Instagram at Math Williams with four S's, um, <laughs> plug, you'll see that, that when I was in university and and I was going out all the time, I was in the worst shape of my life. And I think that instant gratification and failure go hand in hand. You know, we've see, when we went to to Mayfair, we were looking at these types of people, and I would imagine that these types of people are the types of people who delay all their gratification. They seek the higher pleasures in life, and they seek the riches, the psychological and physical riches that life can give you. And I think that happiness is something you have to delay. 
you know, we're not happy. We're not happy with where we are now. You know, we're, we're content. We're not happy. We're no, not, like, I, I, we're no. not like, oh, this is good. We can stick with this. We're always looking for different things. I know. I haven't been happy in a long time because I have, I have absolutely no intention of living a life that is subpar to the absolute greatest and highest class of life that you can live. I want to be smoking a hundred pound Cuban cigars at breakfast with your eleven thousand pound Hermes chessboard, absolutely, <laughs> and I expect nothing less. And I'm not joking. I expect nothing less. No, I don't either. My st- step one yeah. is sorting my parents out. I have absolutely no intention of buying fancy cars, fancy things Maybe. until they're sorted. Well, my father will have an S class before I change my Renault Clio 2007. I absolutely promise you that. That is a promise. Mm. However, once they're sorted, I'm absolutely going to the going to the moon. I'm going to be so. Filthy rich. But it's not just about cash. It's about the life that I want. Yes. I want to be able to buy whatever I want, whenever I want. Yeah. It's like I saw Tristan Tate and he was like, oh, I'm in Dubai. I fancy doing some shopping today. And then his next question was, should I buy Rolls Royce, McLaren or a Lambo? Not like, should I <laughs> indulge in a Prada t-shirt or something? Yeah. It's like, should I get a Rolls Royce? I absolutely want to be able to go out and say, "Oh, man, fancy buying a new McLaren?" I'm bored. I'm oh, bored. Of, I'm bored of my Ferrari. I, for me, it's not the mate. My mother said this to me. My, I was I was talking to my mother and I was telling her she was having a go at me for doing the di- not doing the dishes because I was busy. It was yesterday actually. I was going to the gym. I was, you know, we had quite a busy day, and uh, I was saying to my mum, "I was like, look, ma'am, look, I'm gonna get. I'm working so we can. I can put ourselves in a position where we have a maid, <laughs> cleaner, <laughs> a cook." Um, Alex already wants his own personal chef, but I won't touch on that. I I will, I will, I'll mention that now, carry on. Yeah. Um, and I was saying to her mom, it's not, she was caught saying I was materialistic and I was explaining to her, I was like, mother, it's not, (laughs) it's not the materialistic stuff I want. It's the choice to have the materialistic stuff, which I seek. And I think that, I think freedom is a very big sort of measuring stick for success. It can be... It, well, it's not it, a measuring it, stick. It, it can be it's financial that. freedom. It can be psychological freedom. You know, how many people in their lives have gone through traumatic events, you know, losing their loved ones, um, traumatic events happen to them. And then, like, you know, they've gone through the hardship of that. And then in years later, they're, fi- like, they're free from it. You know, they've got over their trauma. Like, maybe they were, like, I don't know, something bad happened to them. And they've got over that. And then they're emotionally free. They don't have panic attacks. They don't have uh, sleep paralysis from that event. Yeah, and that is freedom, and that then is how someone. Well, that's is the thing. See, that's 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 goes back to, you know, whatever your definition of success is, mm. and I think we're kind of boiling it down here. Is it material? Like I've just told you what I want my life to look like. Yeah, I've got a lot, I've got a lot to say about mine. I won't get into it. I'll let Alex. Uh, yeah, he can. Say but what his. we did touch on, I want to just go back to yeah. the optimal path to success because that I mean, our topic. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, we were talking about the sort of how our characters are slightly different, and the word that the word that we really should be focusing on is temperament, because mm-hmm. temperament essentially defines the sort of person you are. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people. Um, there are a lot of people who are content just sort of living a very comfortable life so they kind of they kind of live their life down the center not too not too roady not too timid yes but it's not a fear thing i don't think well maybe it is because that's a temperament that's a you know temperamental thing also um but there are people who just kind of do that but me now and i have no shame in i don't have pride in it but i have no shame in seeing it because I think I think my temperament is good. I just think it needs channeling. But let me try and explain to you what I think about me. In school, I was the guy getting top grades, top three to five, always from the beginning. I just was good at that sort of sort of thing. But at the same time, I was I was like the king of the antisocial crowd as well. Like I would go and have a fagged in the forest. Yeah, I've got you a know. Story about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, I I'm sure I bought a bong of somebody during school time. <laughs> Like, honestly, I used to sell chocolates. Anything that I wasn't allowed to do, I did. So you were living like a double life. I've always said this. I've always been both ends of the spectrum in extremity. And that's part of my temperament. I'm very extreme. And there are two ways you can approach this. And this is something that might interest you. It may give you a bit of a more of a perspective on me as a person. But you can choose. It's very easy to choose a life of ex- extreme things. Um, it's really hard for me to explain this. I'm going to try. You can you can go down the route. When you're like this, when you're sort of, you don't want that comfortable, smooth sailing life. You're always looking for something really radical. That's me. 
I'm very radical in my views, in everything. It's nothing that I do is the is the the vast majority agree with it's me. Not liberal. No, definitely no, no, absolutely not. Like no, but there's a way. There's a path you can follow. This isn't this isn't a path to success. This is a path to absolute crash and burn. Yes, absolute paralysis and and complete lack of responsibility. But you can follow a path of of crime and drugs when you're this sort of person. When you're extreme like this, you find. It's usually people who are very sort of extreme like this and extreme in their views and extreme in their ideas. They often turn to crime, drugs, get themselves in jail. Um, some of them go into the into the army. Jocko Will Link is exactly like this. And he said that he, had he not left and gone and did what he did, he probably would have been into crime and drugs. Mm. There are people who are just very calm people. And they just have very normal ideas about what they want in their life and what their journey will look like. And I, pro- that is, I, I'm kind of thrive under uncertainty, even though that's not the sort of person I am. I kind of like a challenge of my life could being so extreme in certain ways. But what I've come to realize, and this is the important part, so I hope you're staying with me because I know I'm charting a bit of rubbish here, but please stay with me. So you can go down the path of crime or drugs when you have this very extreme temperament, or you can channel it and put it into something like this, like the gym. That's why I love the gym. That's why I love battering myself in the gym. That's why I love being strong, wanting to be strong. Yeah. You can do that, and then you can literally achieve greatness. more than, Way more than the, the, the calmer person. I need to really learn the different temperaments and, and temperamental behaviors because I'm I'm struggling to explain this clearly. Well, it's like, uh, but do, do yeah. you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. I think there's a Tyson Fury actually said that he thinks that the most successful people have to have something wrong with them, like mentally, not not in a bad way, but they have to be like you have to have some level of crazy up there in order to achieve greatness because some people won't dare. Do you know what I mean? You have to like there's some people are just as factor. I said they're too comfortable. Yeah, they're just happy have a family, settle in, and none of this, this is fine. But I can't think of anything worse yeah, than you, just yeah. do it, just doing the, the smooth sailing. Yeah, I, know? yeah. Um, I was like that, uh, about a year ago today. I think you are a bit like that. No, I, no I'm not like that anymore. I'm, I, I'm anti, like any of that. I'm anti-comfort <laughs> at the minute. Anti-comfort. Um, <laughs> obviously, different life events have shaped that now. You know, we know this. And I think that comfort is the killer of dreams. You know, a lot of a lot of successful and, and famous people have said this. This is a very you know well known quote that comfort is the killer of dreams. You know, we we've all seen the Instagram post that the snooze button will destroy your dreams. It's true. Press the snooze button. It's less competition for us then. Yeah, but I don't think I think I want competition. Yeah. You know, like we said with each other, competition is the only way we thrive. If there is no competition, <laughs> I've, I'm going back on my views here. I'm pretty sure. It, well, actually, no, I'm not. Competition is good in certain environments, but in others it's not. In a, in a wanting to be successful environment, competition is key. You've got to have that. You've got to have. Well, what what is the, the what is the point of success? Effect. Success. Success means uh, overcoming. Success something. as a as a as a definition doesn't really exist without challenge and without competition. There is no challenge in any venture. Someone's got to lose if you want. If you want to win, someone's got to lose. That's that's literally how it goes. You mm. know, if we wanted to succeed, you know, if we wanted to be number one, if we wanted to be the number one We're going to have to stand on a lot of heads, I think. If if we wanted to be the number one podcast in the UK and the world, someone's got to be number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You know, you get the idea. Everyone knows how to count. But if we wanted, <laughs> Not everyone. If we wanted to be number one, someone's got to, someone's got to be number two. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And I think success does create Could a be Reese Richards' podcast. <laughs> going in wrong. One and two. <laughs> coming soon. Uh, <laughs> going in wrong. But if you want to be successful, you have got to be comfortable with competition. You know, uh, there might not be competition for us now locally. You know, hopefully there will be soon. I really encourage people to start podcasts. Get Alex to edit them for you. Um, no, I haven't got I haven't got any shush, fucking no. time. Shush, no. <laughs> Let me speak, bro. Uh, but if you want if we are going to have to accept that it's going to be competition and there is going to be want to see people who are going to want to see us fail. And I don't want to make this about us. I want to make this a general thing for the viewers in life that not everyone is, it's like Mike Tyson said, not everyone you help is your friend and not everyone you fight is your enemy. And you've got to realize that you've got to be comfortable with competition. 
sense because we touched on this in the Antoine podcast. Competition does something to you internally and it sort of turns the cogs in your brain and you find out who you really are when you compete. When you compete in anything, more like you know, more so fighting. I learned this when I was fighting. That I, I sort of learned like a lot about myself and it taught me a lot of valuable lessons in myself and I really like that. But the importance of competition in life is so key to success. You know, if you don't fail and fail and fail and fail, you're not going to succeed. You know, su- success isn't this. It's not this. It's that. Do you know what I mean? It's 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 not. It's not. It's like more. Is it static? Is that what that's called? Emotion. It's it's just it's um. I don't even know what to call it. But anyway, it's it's like that. And the sooner you accept that, the better. The sooner you accept that you're going to have setbacks when you on your path to success. Uh, the better things are going to be for you and you've got to just adapt and that's that's what being successful i think is is being able to adapt to different environments you know yeah and i think that you've just got to put yourself in uncomfortable situations and adapt you know you've got to be conor mcgregor said this you've got to be comfortable in the uncomfortable and i think if you're if you can do that then you really are on the path to success Mm. i think if you're not if you're a person who is not able to to change and be like uh, is it not a leprechaun? What's the, what's the, what's the leprechaun. term? Leprechaun. No, what's the term? What? Oh, what are you on about? Sh- what's the creature that can shape shift to any environment? I don't know. It'll oh. come to me. But if you can't be that, a leprechaun. What leprechaun. are you on about? If you can't be that, if you can't change to your surroundings, you're not going to be successful. You do. You do have to absolutely change to your surroundings. It's bugging me now. I can't think what that is. Right. It doesn't matter really, does it? I mean, we get the idea. But you, what's more important is changing your surroundings to you. You know, I think I've always I've always held the held the idea that you sh- doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing, who you're with. As long as you have an idea, you've just got to focus on that and get there anyway. Mm. But at the same time, I think when I was in London, living in London, I was surrounded by people twenty, twenty one, who were actually doing interesting things. And make the, the make the younger community internationally and South Wales look absolutely, completely unproductive, mm. and well below their ability to to learn because the people who are like twenty one, twenty two, starting businesses in London, they were constantly grafted, and that environment alone, it's only a matter of time before you start a business. It really is like if you're just around that all the time, you know that's that is literally the catalyst to any to any path to success and you have the sort of you can literally see it you can see the different options and that's what uni helps you with as well you can see your path like what path do you want to choose you know you can do whatever you want but i th- I just feel like and what we haven't mentioned i don't i don't think some people even acknowledge that there is a path at all they're not even interested in in, in a path mm. they're interested in a a sideways path with no obstacles. But it's not a forward moving path that actually requires, that actually gets you anywhere. Is it just regressive? No, it's just flat. So same just, thing, yeah. same direction, but with success at the end, whatever your version of success is, it's, as Matthew said, it's sort of like a, an uneven terrain, but it is something you should go for be uncomfortable and i've said this before if you seek comfort you're wrapping yourself in this comfort blanket and you are protected by that and only that once that is ripped away from you you are exposed and vulnerable to the elements to the world to other people's sort of dominance and it'll come and grab you and it's not forgiving it's not forgiven. Life won't be forgiven on you if you seek comfort. No, you'll be so forced into a submissive position. You should yeah. seek success. And as a young man, let's just talk to men for a second. As a young man, you should absolutely seek to be the strongest, the smartest. I would say the best looking. You can't help your biology, and I would never judge someone ever. I mean, I'm not the best looking bi- biologically, so I'm never going to judge anyone for your height, you know, the your, things your, you can't change. But you can make yourself more attractive. You really can. You really can. Like I have it in me to to be more attractive to a woman than than majority of other men. I'm not right now because I'm overweight. I haven't really achieved much, but I absolutely do have that in me. You know, you literally can get to wherever you want. 
But if you think of the optimal path, and I think this is a fantastic way, if you want to give one answer to what is the optimal path to success, I think it is the most difficult one. Yes. Because if nothing else, if nothing else, embrace the difficulty of it. Mm -hmm. And this is why I was telling Matthew, I was like, I've kind of lost the love for training because I was training in the morning and I was getting up at five o'clock, having a sip of water and then straight to the gym. I didn't even open my eyes until I got there. I didn't even allow myself the pleasure so of seeing. You, you just drove to the gym like that. Yeah, that's muscle memory at this point. I do that. I've done that drive so much. But I'm joking anyway. But my point is, you know, I'd get to the gym and I, w- I wouldn't really enjoy it. But every rep was like difficult because I was so tired. You know, I've been up until 11 p.m. And then I'm up at 5 a.m. And I'm in the gym before I've even woken up. And that alone was really difficult. And when I got home, I was like, yeah, I got to the gym and I felt good because I actually did something I didn't want to do. And that in itself creates you a better person. Because when I am up in the morning, I feel good. Like there is not a chance that I'm not going to give my all in the gym. If I can go and I'm really feeling crap, then, you, you know, look out when I'm actually in a, in a feeling good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that yeah. that in itself is a success because I've gone up this this hilly terrain and I'm at a higher level now. I've I've literally boosted my minimum capacity for what I'm capable of enduring physically and mentally. That is higher than somebody who just seeks comfort. Of someone's maximum. And that's why I'm very extreme because I'm constantly pushing myself and doing things I really don't want to do. But at the same time, I do shit out of a lot of things too. Mm. Like physical competition. Yeah. And it's an ego thing. I'm trying to create myself. I'm trying to... You're sort of wrapping your ego in a comfort blanket there. No, 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 no. I, I think, it, well, yes, but I think it's more than that. I think I'm trying to present a persona, a version of myself that isn't really, isn't what I know to be true. Mm. And I'm worried I'll get found out if I... Because once you compete, I mean, fighting, I think, is the, obviously the most raw, most accurate form of combat man to man. It's got to be, isn't it? Yeah. Not powerlifting, because you're going to have a bad day in powerlifting and everything goes wrong. But yeah. when you're there, if me and you want a fight now, it'd be, it'd be very clear, the winner of that fight, that is the that is the more capable man in a fight. That is it. I'm always I, the one, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah. Think that's the, I think that's it, though. I think that is, I mean, that's not really relevant to my point, but it's still, you know, what I'm trying to say. But, it, you know, it really is. I think I've shied away from a lot of competition, and that's why I'm going to compete in powerlifting now. Even though it's not my absolute passion what i found and by the way if you have no motivation firstly go and listen to our episode on motivation and secondly what i've noticed and i'm really good at this i'm really good at getting myself out of a rut i'm great at starting something starting the discipline starting the motivation and the only way to do it is not to wait until you feel good because if you're in a rut and you've been in bed and you've been feeling sorry for yourself watching netflix for like six days and you've just been eating crap we've all been there if you've had a really dark moment as a man or a woman we've all been there i know we have whether it's through a breakup whether it's just sort of like a mental breakdown you just kind of like lost yourself you know we've all had it as teenagers i think people have have had it so so often i had it i when i was in uni i had it um right before the first lockdown i was just on my own in my room and i was just ordering i did hardly left my room um and what i'm good at is getting myself out of that rut but what i'm my point is you're not ever going to feel motivated to pull yourself out of it because you've got yourself into this where this is your habit now. Yeah, you're the only, the so only it actually feels uncomfortable yeah. to change that, even if you know that that's better. So what you've got to do is you've just got to know that in order to generate motivation and discipline in a positive direction, you've just got to start doing first, and then you'll believe in the journey afterwards. You've just got to start doing first, build momentum, and then the feelings will catch up. Mm. You know, I, I think I'll and pause they, there. They compound then as well. Yeah. I think the gym... To back to to relate this to fitness and the gym because we are a gym podcast. The way to the way to look at this is, how do you grow in the gym? Because I believe the way you grow in the gym and the way you grow outside of the gym are literally the same thing. How do we grow in the gym, Al? Failure, and that's literally it. <laughs> Failure, you know. No, trying. And and sometimes failure. Okay, yeah, but if you. If you cannot reach failure in the gym, you're not going to grow. You might grow. You might have, you know, minimal gains. 
But if you reach failure in the gym all the time, you're going to grow. You know, if you're pushing like that every session consistently and you're going to failure all the time, you're going to grow. And the same thing is in life. You know, if you're going to, if we're going to try new things and we're going to fail and succeed, we're going to learn. How many failures have we had re- like in the in the whole podcast since we started? We've had a few. They might not yeah. be. They might not. They're be, not epic failures. They might not be big failures, but they are mic- they are micro failures. They are moments where we've gone, ah, oh, oh, and then we've learned from them. And if you don't have them, those moments in life where you're like, oh, I failed, and then you don't recognize why, you're not going to go anywhere, and you're not going to succeed. Well, there's a, there's a route for you. Seek failure. Yeah, literally. there's a route to success. This is the what this is the route I like. Because it all comes back to consistency. Because if you're a consistent person and you seek failure all the time, nine times out of ten, this guy. Sorry, sorry. Nine times out of ten, if you seek failure and you are a very consistent person, you're going to find it and then you're going to grow. Mm. And I think that is, for me, that is the optimal path to success is just trialing and, and failure. But if you if you put it in your if you put it in your head as well that you are going to do this and embrace when you fail then you're never going to give up in the uh, in the face of potential failure so if for example like i'm about to start a powerlifting program tomorrow uh let's say i've got a competition in 10 weeks you know if i said to my coach now antoine i said look i really don't know if i can do this um, you know, I'm worried I might come last or I'm worried I might not hit depth, hit depth on my squat. You know, if I did that, then what I've done is I've I've not even given myself the opportunity to go through the motion which is necessary to get to, n- to the next level. And if the next level is just continuing on this path. It's the same as when I drink when I drink on the weekends. If I go all out in a week and then I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can do this every day. I don't even know what I'm capable of because I don't give myself 100%. You don't, you don't fail. I could be dangerous if I went seven days a week. And I know you might laugh thinking that. It's a very arrogant thing to say. But honestly, as a man and a woman, actually, you should believe it in yourself that you can be the most dangerous person. And I don't mean like I'm going to send the bloody slightly bob to your door. No, dangerous is I just the mean like version of you. I could, if we, if we had a, I don't know, I just feel like you need to get to that point where people look at you and just think it's not even worth going head to head to this guy in competition. Not I'm not I don't mean necessarily fight like in, yeah. well fighting but I mean also just like if we if we had a conversation and you tried to come and come and tell me something about myself saying I don't like that you do this I'm like oh you you try me fucking try me you know <laughs> like you just got to get that bulletproof mentality like nothing can hurt me nothing will stop me i will fail and i will get back up and i will keep going yeah. i think that in itself makes you dangerous because you will keep going regardless of what happens so yeah. that is there is a there is a certainty that you are going to be successful even if the path that you take is a series of unlinked paths i think they're all interlinked because obviously they lead to each other yeah, but if yeah. you imagine you imagine like a path just like a path in the middle of nowhere, going nowhere. You know, you can, it's literally like you, you go down this path, you fail, and then you, you, you start on a new path, but that path has led you there. You couldn't have got to this second leg of the journey without having done the first initial, in, initial leg of the journey. And that's it, I think. I think it can be, and this is why we were really confused about how this episode is going to go, because there are so many answers to this question. If we're bringing it back to the question of what is the optimal path to success i really don't know i really don't know it could be so many different things i think there are different methods and i think seeking failure things. just just to finish seeking yeah. failure i think is probably one of the best i think yeah. i think that's a good one i think in order to achieve this bulletproof mindset that alex has spoke about you do need to take a few bullets like i know that might be very like you know, cliche to say but you do need to actually go through failure in order to be comfortable with it. Because if you've never failed, because you've never gone to try to fail, what happens when you do fail? You're going to fall apart. Mm. You know, it's it's counterproductive to not fail. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like if you're, and I like what you said there, if you're to be bulletproof, you have to have taken bullets. Mm. And this is what we say 
one of the best well, ways that's to an original saying for me, but like, yeah, we, I'm, yeah, yes, I'll give you credit. That's that was good, but uh, it's the same as you know trying to reach success. But the only way to get there is to have experienced the path of failure. Mm. Oh yeah. It's like you cannot get to success smooth sailing. It's like rich kids when their parents buy them everything. They haven't achieved success because they don't know what failure is. It's like how do you know what the good feels like if you haven't experienced the bar that's also associated with it? Mm. So there's a journey for you. And people might, if you were looking at this visually, because that's what I'm doing now. I'm all of this is a visual thing for me in terms of an actual path, like a footpath. I'm literally picturing a footpath like a hiking trail. And there's a, there's a series of different options. People will also or, or, or sometimes think of seek, uh, embracing and seeking failure as moving backwards, away from success, which is right in front of you. But that's not true. If you seek a path that hasn't got failure on it, you're essentially walking around in circles. You might go forward a little bit, but you're going to come backwards. You're in a long circle. And, and do you know what the irony is? You will fail by avoiding failure because you, you'll you have to give up at some point. It's a different kind of failure than that. that is. You're either playing it too safe and allowing your competitors to outwork you, or you give up completely right before... You know that, uh, have you seen that picture of yeah, when somebody's like digging, digging for yeah. gold and he literally gives up like a, like like a, like a meter before he gets to, to the gold. And, and that's it. I think just continuing in the face of uncertainty and potential failure, that probably is one of the best ways, I think, Yeah, to get I, there. I agree, yeah. I think consistency and just not giving up is obviously, it's easier said than done, though. We're saying it as if it's like... Well, we said at the beginning, this wasn't a lecture. No. This is us seeking the optimal That's, path to success. Like, yeah. what is it? I think it's easy for us. It's, you know, it's easier said than done, obviously, what we're talking Talk is about. cheap, it really is. You know, we're sat here in the comfort of a nice, well, uh, you know, well-built and well-lit studio and... Uh, yeah, it's 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 easy to say that, but really, and at this point, I still don't think we've really done anything really difficult. I think it's kind of been smooth sailing for us. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Because I already had a lot of stuff. I had a lot of the knowledge. The learning we've done but has been... But is that, is, that is that a factor of your father's failures to success? Do you know what I mean? So, for example... now you Yeah, have, but I don't count that. No, but some, that, no. Is, that could be the reason why. You know, if your father didn't didn't work hard and get to a position where he could provide all this for you, you know, you can't sort of say you're lucky because he sort of put in the work for you, if you know what I mean. It's like, say, for example, when I have children, I, well, not now, but when I have children in the future, they're going to, they're not going to be, I'm going to be rich, obviously, but I'm not going to, you know, they, they, I've done the work and that that's the fruits of my labor. But I'm not going to have children because they're an obstacle on my journey to success. So unless I can give them to a, a, a nice woman to, to raise for me, and as long as I don't have to feed them or see them, then I'm absolutely okay with that. Because it's got to be, you've got to be focused on success. And if you have kids, you're going to fail in life. I wouldn't say that. That's the, <laughs> it just makes it harder. It's an obstacle. No, you should. The thing is that we can't say that about children because we never had them. No, you should. I'm you sure should, the joy of having you children should, is Look, you should see success as what it is to you. And I said, I know people who just want security. Mm. Success for them is a stable job that they enjoy and co-workers they enjoy with a wife that they love to, to pieces and a child that they would die for mm. in a nice house that they own themselves. That is that is the peak of success for many people. Yeah. And I completely am on board with that. The only difference is that I am that very temperamentally, I'm extreme. I can't settle for it. I can't settle. Like yeah, full I'm, stop. I'm like that, yeah. You know, I, I literally, yeah. like, this is the problem I get. And this is why I, and this is why, I know Matthew's gonna, he's gonna shrug his shoulders on me now, but this is why I like smoking cigars. Because cigars, Who's even if, no, 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 I'm not talking about scientific <laughs> stuff now. I mean, it literally forces you to slow down. Slow down, take a puff, and I know, just I'll, sit I, down I and I think. There. Oh, we're 45 for one cigar. Yeah, but he didn't slow down. He was just he was just getting moody. And actually, I wish you weren't there because you actually made that a bit slightly unpleasant. But that's not the point. My point <laughs> is, the act of smoking a cigar, it forces you to slow down. For me, as somebody who's really extreme, I'm very much like constantly thinking all the time. You know, up until like 11 o'clock at night. And then I'm like, chef, I don't sleep now. I'm not going to have enough sleep when I get up in the morning. And then I'm up in the morning and I'm in the gym and then I'm thinking about work. And then while I'm in work, I'm thinking about 
my actual work and then while well, I'm doing that I'm thinking oh god am I am I yeah. am I wasting my time here trying to sort away and stuff when I should be working and then when my work finishes I'm like right what I eat now and then go for a walk and then I come back and I'm like god I've only done like 3,000 steps today because I'm sat at my desk all day I'm constantly thinking about what I can do better but I have so many different things in my life it's really 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 difficult um and that's something that is also an obstacle because you're gonna have obstacles in this path to success mm. and You've I think recognize that though I you, think, yeah, you I can't think it's just hard. Go, this is the, you can't just look at it and go, oh my gosh, this is the end. I can't overcome this. You're going to wreck. It's easy to recognize you're going to have obstacles when you don't have obstacles. But then when you come across things that are obstacles, you've got to recognize them as that. And just think, how am I going to get over this? You've got to take it one step at a time. You know, when we go through a rough patch, we're not just going to go, Alex, you know what? It's been fun, mate. Let's wrap this in, sell all the kit and go half us. We're going to be like, how are we going to get through this? Do you know what I mean? You've got to have that never give up attitude, never, never see, never die. That's, the, that's I think that's what it's called, and you've just got to not quit, basically. And obviously, it's easier said than done that. But I think as yeah, a we haven't really person, we haven't got to that point yet. Where I've got to that point in life. You know, I don't want to be deep. I don't want to deep. I don't think you have. I think you think you have. Mm. I don't think you have math, regardless of what you've been through. I don't think you really have. It's easy for you to say that. When but it's easy for you it. to say that as a 21-year-old who hasn't really had that much happen no, to No, in perspective, no. My life has been easier except for the last couple of months. Yeah. But when you go from, like, up here to down here, that fall is very hard, mm. you know, and it's it's hard to describe. Yeah, well, yeah, but that's that's your perspective as somebody very, who hasn't seen very much. I think that's a very, very heartless thing you've said. I don't like that, that you've said that. I don't like I don't like you saying that because it's, it's a bit annoying for you to say that to me. But regardless, you know, I forgot my point was no no i'm sticking by that because you're 21 right so we, we haven't seen anything really in life no it's but... it is it is personal to everyone what you feel because obviously you're up here and you're down here the fall is still the same sort of feeling falling from a sense of security to feeling like you have nothing and wanting nothing but death really mm. and i can i cannot i can only imagine how horrible that is it is bad yeah but I don't think you can really say that because you haven't been me. Obviously, I'm not saying I've seen like you know, you know. I'm not saying I've seen like my whole family get bombed. You know, no, I'm just saying don't dwell in it. No, but exactly, I agree with that. You know, if you That's if my you, point. If you sleep, if you sleep on your losses, you're you're going to wake up with a loss. Yeah. You know, if you sleep on your wins, you're going to wake up with a loss. That's a John Carvin quote. Um, you've got to in tight in tough times, you've got to look around and you've got to think, how am I going to get out of this? That's what I was doing. When I was bar down bad, that sounds like quite city boy of me to say. But when I was down bad, I was just looking <laughs> like, how can I get? How can this be better? Because if you're if you feel at your worst, the only place you can go is up. You know. Yeah, it's like that Dwayne Johnson's speech when he says, "Your back's against the wall. You can only move forward." So if you're really, and this is another thing, while we're, while we're on this topic, if you are feeling like you you literally nothing nothing worse could happen to you right now and by the way firstly there's always somebody worse off than you and secondly if you are feeling like right i have literally this is it now i'm i'm at rock bottom well I, well good now you can move forward because that's the only direction for you yeah I it's obviously before, yeah. it's going to be almost impossible it's like i was saying um we were talking in the last episode like for example we were talking about Jocko Willink and he said bad things happen good and if I and I said what well, what if like my parents died I can't imagine if Jocko Willink said well good now yeah, you have we, trauma we to build this. on yeah. I'd be like shut the fuck up don't ever say that to me now that this just has happened you're in a different headspace mm. I was and yeah, it does yeah. take it takes somebody else it takes somebody like me to tell you just move forward now yeah. and it does piss I, you off because yeah. I haven't been through it but it does take somebody else to tell you yeah but it's like it's almost like if you were me back then, how would you have reacted? I don't know because I haven't had that yeah. happen to me. And it's like that—that that is the, the sort of the annoying thing. It's yeah. Not the fact that you said that to me, it's like it's like, oh, you weren't me. You don't know what I was. You can't be. Little. But don't get upset about it. Don't let I yourself do, get do upset. I get about upset it. right now. You are. You are clearly yeah. upset about it because you no, just said it's just, annoyed me. It. It just you can't say how you would. You can't really lecture me on it because you weren't there. You know, I was like completely alone mentally. Mm. Whether it's my own choice because of yeah. my actions, yeah, you weren't there, and it's like I wouldn't wish what hap- like how bad I was psychologically on anyone. You know, I wouldn't wish it on you. And yeah, it's like it's ha- it's easy for you to sit there from a, yeah, probably from a, a comfortable family, and I'm not saying yeah. I'm, I'm uncomfortable. Obviously, you know, <laughs> it's not as if everyone in my family's dead. It's easy for you. No, to sit, but it, it's, it's just... easy for you to, from your position of like comfort, sit there and be like, oh, you know, there's always someone worse off better than you. But when you're in that moment, then 
This is what well, you don't, when you're yeah, in that you don't moment, you're like, like, mate, this is the worst thing ever. Yeah. But it does get better. And I, I wouldn't be a case example of that. Like, you know, I won't go into too much detail, but I was like... It wasn't even that long ago. No, it was April. It was actually... It was Easter Sunday this year. I was literally <laughs> thinking of yeah. killing myself. I was like, shouldn't rock, laugh. It's I was not like funny rock bottom. No, it is. It is funny to me now because obviously I'm in such a position now. I'm like, the last thing I want to do is die because I've got so much to live for. But like, I felt like I had nothing to live for. Well, that's a success. So you've experienced success properly. Then that Emotional is success. Success. Yeah. So explain that then. Explain that path and what you think is important for other people to know in. In walking that path that you've walked, how do they walk that path? Um, God, uh, put a kettle on now. This is going to be a squat. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, well, when I was at my lowest, I felt like really barn. I felt like like every day I was waking up. It was like much I'm like a headache all the time, but instead of a headache, it's just pain, like just like throbbing pain. Like I just had this like throbbing pain in my head, and it's just like. I don't know, it feels like I couldn't breathe mentally. Like, do you ever have that moment where you're like, I just want to break? Do you ever have that? I do sometimes. It, it was, it's like that, and you just can't... F- it's hard to put into words, because, like, I was, like, crying my eyes out. I was, like, I felt so alone. I felt, like, so deserted by, like, not everyone, but it wasn't ever anyone's fault. It was my own. But the stuff that happened to me, it was just, it just made me feel so bad and just so, like deflated mentally and i was like what the, what is the point in this like i just you know mm. if i was a if i was like not a quitter um, but if i was like if i couldn't handle the pain obviously i would have done something really bad but for me that was a very telling moment that i'm i'm strong and i think you only find out how strong you are through tough times yeah and to explain possibly. the path to people firstly re- reach out you know speak to someone i did speak to someone i spoke to my i spoke to my auntie and uh, I just want to thank her for all my for talking to me. And uh, I was really, <laughs> I was really bad. My, my, I spoke to my mum about this and when she got home from being away, and we, we we had a nice chat about it. And I told her my feelings. But the most importantly is to speak to someone and realize that you're not alone. You know, when you're really bad mentally, you feel like you're the only person on earth. <laughs> And you feel like literally no one cares about you. People do care about you. You you do have family that love you. And for me, it was all about that. And it was all about channeling the, the negativity into positivity. You know, like we said in episode one, you know, I found out about my dad and then eight hours later, I was under a squat bar. And I think you've got to do something like that. You know, Club Iron, it was born through personal struggle. Oof. You know, and you've got to remember that there, there is always a purpose to your life. There is never a moment where your life is worthless. Because no one's life is worthless. There is always there is always something in your life to live for, and there are there is someone who loves you, and you need to live for them. This has gone really this has gone really but really down down the deep road really quickly. Um, well, use it as a use it as a motivator to push you towards success. I mean, tough times are going to shape good people. Mm. I'm not saying seek trauma in the same way. Like you wouldn't, as you said, you wouldn't wish that on anyone, but. Uh, you know, I don't think anyone should shy away. I think as a man and a woman, you, you are a coward if you shy away from things that are hard. Yeah. Some things are harder than others. Like for me, vlogging and putting myself out there in social media is hard. But that's not really hard, is it? In no. the grand scheme of things that are hard, you know, like, oh, I don't know. Being emotionally available is probably hard for me. Mm. I don't like to be like, like I don't like people to think like people. I think that when they speak to me personally, they might think sometimes I'm a bit like bland. Bland, like, yeah. It's not. I'm not bland. I just don't want to open up to people. It's like I, I've opened up now about ment- about like my mental health history because I hope that someone can take something from it. And if anyone does ever listen to this podcast and they do feel like alone or something. Please reach out, not only to me, to Alex, to Well, anyone. we got to find someone to listen first. <laughs> well, there's millions of people. <laughs> but no, um, failure is a part of life, and it is the path to success. You know, you, you are not, you're not defined by your failures in life. You are f- defined by your ability to overcome failures in life. And I think that if you don't overcome failure, you're not going to progress anywhere. Mm. You've got to be comfortable with the fact you are going to face failures in life. Yeah, I find. Um, do you know? Do you know what I think is? Andrew Tate says this a lot. 
he talks about trauma and how all great men <laughs> you better hope my father doesn't see that all great men uh, or men of value have been through suffering in their life and then I'm thinking <laughs> and it sounds terrible I'm like how can I inflict immense suffering in my life in order to be a man of high value? And then I'm thinking, no, 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 that's not, that's not, that's not a good way to approach life. But at the same time, in my current situation, it, it is, it is. I don't want to jinx anything, and I don't believe in that anyway. But I, I am in a good position, I think, and I don't think I've experienced deep suffering, and I don't know. Because I am, I insist on becoming a, a very high value man. Mm. I want to be that dangerous individual that no one wants to. Like, I want. I don't want to be one to be reckoned with. Essentially, I want to just be a figure of authority. So does every man. I know that's true. Every single young it's man. Wants that. It is really, really, is. really is. You know, and I'm just thinking, how can I do that? I'm not trying to find the easy route, but I'm thinking I'm. I don't have things that have happened to me that could allow me to be great in that sense because a lot of people say you need that. Mm. And then I'm like, well, what do I do then? What path can I follow that might lead me to suffering? And I'm like, why am I chasing suffering? Yeah. Maybe I should just chase micro failures and then build on them. I don't know. I mean, it's a strange one because I know a lot of people have been through some real, real shit. Mm. Put you put you to shame. Yeah, like you've been through nothing about some of these people. Yeah, um, it's not it's not a contest. Like a I've been through more trauma yeah. than you. Yeah, but um, you know it really does shape them. And this guy, you now he's bulletproof. <laughs> you're not you're not shaking him mentally. Like he's been through it all. I I think I think I'm quite quite like that now. I think, Do you reckon? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm thinking it's like it's like if I wanted in my own head to take my own life. How, n like me you now nothing to lose sort of mentality yeah though. nothing like who who is gonna no one else can put me in a position from is that. this why you find it strange that i give in to the instant gratification of one in a pint you're like that are really there are much bigger things to spend your time thinking about than going to the college yeah. do you think it's because of my lack of trauma that i can't or, or haven't mustered the discipline to... i just don't think you've been through like like failure like that much like Obviously, I don't know. I don't know your whole life history. You know, I'm not. Mm. I haven't read the book of Alex. Not, um, but I've been through many micro failures, but nothing big. But you've never hit an obstacle, and you've gone, and it's never gone like that. And you, you're like, the fact right. that nothing's jumping out to me means probably not. Yeah, no. like I can identify like three or four things that have hit me like a truck, and I'm like, I've got to reshape myself. And they, they are. I don't want to say blessings in disguise because they're not. Nothing, none of that is. I just want to try and create a more positive light around these things. And I think that the I've learned more about myself in the last six months due to traumas. And I don't want to speak good. I just don't want to give them attention all the time. You know what I mean? I don't want to be that trauma kid. I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> I don't want to be like this traumatic person. I've been through it, whatever. We all know this. You know, I sort of like, now that I'm more logical in my thinking currently, I'm like, sort of, I agree with what Alex said previously about, about that. Because there are people who've gone through worse things than me. Oh yeah, there are like I have. I'm lucky. I have a very good support network of family. Yeah, friends. you are very lucky. You know, some some people who go go through stuff like this. The person I'm on about, I'm I'm gonna com don't keep. Yeah, I'm gonna not, keep it completely yeah. anonymous. But he, the people who, the things that he went through, were sort of losing people around him, and he all he had was the boys, literally no family, mm. and I I honestly cannot begin to comprehend how that must have felt. But now. Even though I've achieved a lot more than him in terms of things on paper, like stupid shit, like academics, a degree, well, not just that, other things, mm. all sorts of things, financial, everything. But, and this is the thing all he wants is security, family, so settled that's down. That's because of what he's that's Exactly. Him. This is the thing. Your definition of success is going to be different. Everyone's is. But your experience is. You know, and we're quite similar. We had a, we had a good family life yours changed drastically recently mm. yes i appreciate that but you've got a good support network nevertheless so turn it into a positive maybe that's what i have done and use that to propel you forward in your path to success instead yeah. of go like for example you said 
after this happened to you, this traumatic experience, you were almost immediately in the gym. Whereas when I, we, this was episode one, I think we talked about this. And I said, I would get a bottle of whiskey and a pack of fags yeah. and I would just yeah. sulk. So that's one thing, right? Don't be me. Well, you could be me. Depends. If something really bad happens, some people are just going to go, I don't want to go to the gym. You don't have to. Don't, you know, you don't have to. I, in fact, I'm quite kind of impressed that you actually managed to, I just don't know how, how Do you, know you could what? have. It wasn't even. It wasn't you just even, didn't give yourself time to think. No, probably. no, no. It wasn't that. It was like, it was like, I need to. Like it wasn't like oh the gym the gym I was like I'm going there it's like whenever it's like whenever like <laughs> like years ago when I was running all the time whenever I used to experience any slight sort of unhappiness I'd go for a run like like that I'd running like that it was like a Saturday night I'd be running running the streets I sound like a mob boss then uh, but I'd be like <laughs> running but I think the lesson to be learned from this is that the optimal path to success is to succeed through failure I think that's our interpretation of it well my interpretation of it currently you know there's a lot of avenues we can go down with this with this uh with this topic i think it's time that we wrap up now i uh obviously this episode has been quite a long one and it's been quite intense towards the end i'm not <laughs> i'm not annoyed at alex at all i'm glad he said what he said yeah because it's no it's interesting because obviously what's interesting here is that i have i have spoken about my experience this has really amplified the importance of you know how your perspective changes or shapes your view of success and also shapes your view of what do you think the right path might be mm. so if you're picking and choosing a path to success firstly define what your success is for me as somebody who has a very extreme personality i'm always trying to do extreme things you know i don't want to be the one go into a club i want to be the one owning the club i want to be the dj i want to be the lighting guy i want to be everyone mm. i don't want to be the guy sit, stood there dancing to the music yeah i don't want to be a number i want to be the guy who can, who counts the numbers i want to be the one who knocks yeah i i feel like that as well i feel like when i go out and stuff i, I feel like i don't belong in the consumer crowd i belong in the in the creator, in the creator crowd. side of it it's like tiktok mm. i'd much rather be the guy people watch than watch the guy that yeah. everyone wants to watch I, that's that's becoming more apparent to me now especially after london honestly i don't want to i don't <laughs> operation wanna, Mayfair's i don't commenced. want to i don't want to exaggerate how how important london was because we said this on about four different fronts now a podcast a youtube video that's yet to come out actually um but operation Mayfair or Mayfair in general has actually changed me a lot as a person it's realized what i want and it's realized, like, the sort of person I want to be. Hmm. So de de define that first, because you can't determine a path to success without determining and understanding where success lies for you. And what, and, and look, don't even, if, if nothing else, what sort of person do you want to be? And you could literally set yourself very micro goals, like in three months or in three days, what sort of person would I like to be? What sort of person would I not like to be that I currently am? That's a big thing for me because there's a lot of things that I am that I don't want to be. And then you can start to formulate a path. You know, what does that entail? Does it entail cutting out people around you that are, encouraging the behavior that you don't like see there's a lot of elements we haven't even touched on in this episode oh we we've could got, make a, a six part series we've to got this. uh we've got the fact of do you long-term objectives versus short-term objectives the benefits of both I f we can really go down a rabbit yeah you could here. go down the, mi the micro speed macro patience we could discuss that but i think we will make another episode on this we, should, we absolutely will we yeah. absolutely will and as we get more experience in the business world and as i get more experienced really coming out of my shell and just embracing fear and doing things I've never really done out of fear. Like I want to compete in powerlifting and then I'm going to do some fighting. Things that I don't want to do, but I'm going to do them anyway. You feel great after doing them. Yeah, and I, I chase sense. that because after yeah. every podcast episode, I feel good. But I always feel nervous before and I always don't know what I'm saying doing it. But afterwards, you get that good feeling. I no pint. Dopamine. I get more dopamine after we do these. The drive home is probably one of the best drives I ever do after, <laughs> after these episodes. Honestly, in my head, I'm thinking, "Oh, I'm a you jinx, you know, you're gonna you're gonna die in the way home." Probably, now. I won't be wishing all that I do. Just just to put that out there, I'll be wishing <laughs> that I live. But with that said, I think it's time to wrap up. But yeah. Before we actually end this episode, um, Alex has obviously touched on this in throughout the episode, but he does have an announcement to make. 
I'm not going to leave Alex Taylor to <laughs> announce this. Well, I, mean, I wouldn't say his announcement, but I've, I've announced, I've essentially announced this in every episode so far, but I don't think anyone really cares. No one cares. But, but it's official. I'm saying it anyway, because I don't care. I care. It's my podcast. Shut up. Um, so I'm going to start powerlifting properly. I know I, I ran a powerlifting club and I was in a powerlifting club for three years. Kind of, kind of embarrassing that even though I'd done all that, I'd never competed. Um, there was COVID and everything, but I'm going to do it now. I'm going to compete now. Antoine, the junior British, British junior national champion. Our last podcast guest. Our I'm last sure podcast well, guest. So, so you should have listened to that last week. If you haven't, go and listen to that after this. No. Uh, immediately, once you've heard my announcement. But uh, yeah, I'm going to compete probably sometime early next year, mid next year. I don't know. It depends what Antoine wants me to do. But going back to basics, because um, I can't hit depth on my squat. That's a that's a realization I didn't like, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna go back to basics, do the programs, get strong, do a powerlifting competition, and may who knows, maybe I'll fall in love with it and actually just make a career out of it. I'll become the the fattest, strongest 105 in town. <laughs> in town, I hope you mean that <laughs> as, as a general thing. Yeah, when I say in town, I mean well, I mean in town, but. Yeah, so that is. I probably Alex. am the strongest 105 at national. That's, that's 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 putting it a bit far, but yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, with that being said, Alex is obviously competing. He may or may not be sponsored by Club Iron, and then there may be a Club Iron sponsor after. You. We'll see if if we allow that. Um, what but, you think, a Club Iron? What I, I'm going to disregard that. Out of, uh, yeah, that was that was an obvious joke. He will obviously be sponsored by us, and we will obviously be on his kit. Um, and yeah, I think we're going to track that whole progress as well. That yeah, whole yeah. Process. It's going to be a series, I think, on YouTube. With it, well, it's not funny that we mentioned YouTube. What a, what a coincidence. We have actually <laughs> now, we have actually now oh. got two Sony ZV10 cameras. Don't rob us. <laughs> I'm only joking. We have got two Sony ZV10 cameras now, and we are content creating constantly. We just filmed, we just filmed, a pull day, uh, where Alex ego lifts. I'm joking. I, I definitely do. Those, 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 those reps. Some of those reps were a bit, uh, a bit juicy. They, they were a bit questionable. So we've got, we, rec we recorded that. We've also got another exciting video, which we are going to be recording, I believe, a week today. We can't say what that is yet, though. Unfortunately, that is, a, it's a trade secret. We cannot, cannot tell you that. Uh, we've also got loads of other gym sessions recorded. We've that we're going to record. We've got React videos coming out. Uh, these obviously haven't been announced dates yet. But we, in other words, we got a lot of content planned. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna unpack Matthew's um, cycle stack. Yeah, break it down. Break it down. He's gonna do that uh, next week. Yeah, and that's that then. So yeah, we've got a lot of content planned, and uh, as always, thank you for listening, guys. I hope you have a great evening. No, I don't. Night, I really don't. Whenever you've uh, whenever you listen to this, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode and that you can take some value from it whether it was that I wanted to kill myself or whether it was that Alex hasn't experienced any trauma and is heartless <laughs> or whether the fact that one of those is true and failure go hand in hand. But anyway, like always guys, thank you for listening and we shall see you. Oh,